The MLB season is officially over after the Braves defeated the Astros in six games last night, winning their first World Series since 1995. And with that in mind, I thought it would be a perfect time to drop a power ranking video. So pretty simple video here. Now let's hop right into this. Coming in at number 30, the worst team in baseball, I have the Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles most definitely have a bright future ahead. They have a boatload of prospects ready to make their debut as soon as next season. And that includes the number one prospect in all of baseball in Adley Rushman. But there is no denying that this team is the worst in baseball. I got them coming in at number 30. At 29, I have the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks finished with 52 wins, which is identical to the Baltimore Orioles. And it was really just an all-around disappointing year. Cattell Marte was on and off the field. He was never really healthy all season long. And Zach Allen was inconsistent all year. And this team was expected to be pretty bad heading into the season, but no one expected them to be this bad. Coming in at number 28, I have the Texas Rangers. The Rangers made it clear that they are heading towards rebuild mode this year as they traded away two of their best players in Joey Gallo and Kyle Gibson. It's a tough time for Texas fans as this is really the beginning of the rebuild for them. They're really not going to be a good team for a very long time. Coming in at number 27, I have the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates played as many people expected them to this year. They were expected to be bad, and they were bad. The Pirates really don't got much going on right now. They are a very bad baseball team, and I have them coming in at number 27. Moving on here at number 26, I have the Colorado Rockies. I do my best not to be biased with them. I'm just going to call it how it is. This is a bad baseball team. They exceeded expectations this year as they went 74-87, and after trading Nolan Arenado in this past offseason and getting nothing in return, really the Rockies have a long way to go. Coming in at number 25, I have the Washington Nationals. Now people might be thinking this is too low for them, but we have to keep in mind they traded away two of their top players in Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. With Scherzer gone and Patrick Corbin and Strasburg not being what they once were, this rotation is really just lacking in options. They do have one of the brightest young stars in the game in Juan Soto, and he's definitely going to get them some wins, but he can only take them so far. And at number 24, I have the Miami Marlins. The Marlins don't have the best offense in the world, but they have a very good young rotation. They had a great breakthrough season in 2020, followed up by a 67-win season this year, but going forward, this team looks like they are going to be on the rise and one of the better young teams in the game. At 23, I have the Chicago Cubs. This is really the beginning of the rebuild for the Cubs as they traded away many of their stars in Anthony Rizzo, Javier Baez, and Chris Bryant. This year, the Cubs finished with 71 wins, and going forward, Cubs fans are going to have to get used to it. And at number 22, I have the Detroit Tigers. The Tigers took a huge leap this year, finishing with 77 wins on the season when many predicted them to lose 100 games. This team is not loaded with talent, but they played well this year. I think another year of Casey Mize is going to be another year of improvements for him, and you have Spencer Torkelson likely to make his debut, adding more reinforcements to this roster. And at 21, I have the Kansas City Royals. The Royals finished 2021 at 74 and 88, and this is what many people predicted. The Royals do need a lot of help in their starting rotation, but in terms of their offense, they have plenty of help. They have great talents like Salvador Perez and Adalberto Mondesi, and they have arguably the top prospect in all of baseball and Bobby Witt Jr., who is most definitely going to make his debut in 2022. Coming in at 20, I have the Minnesota Twins. An extremely disappointing year for Minnesota. They finished the season at 73-89, and 89, and many people were predicting them to challenge the White Sox for the AL Central crown. But it was an all-around disappointing year. I think the Twins still have a pretty solid roster, so I think there is reason to believe that they could bounce back next year, but I still don't think they're a very good baseball team. At 19, I have the Los Angeles Angels. The Angels finished the season at 77-85, and 85, and they are really just a weird team. You could argue that they have the two best players in all of baseball in Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. But outside of them, they don't have too much talent at all other than Anthony Rendon. If this team doesn't beef up their starting rotation, they are going to continue to waste the illustrious careers of Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. 
Coming in at 18, I have the New York Mets. The Mets were a team that a lot of people were predicting to win the National League East as they made some big acquisitions in the offseason. They picked up Carlos Carrasco and Francisco Lindor in the offseason, leading to optimism in New York. But things simply didn't go well for the Mets. Players either underperformed or were not healthy all year long, leading to a 77-win season. Coming in at 17, I have the Cleveland Indians. The Indians are a team that really no one pays attention to. They're not in a big market whatsoever. They don't have many superstar players that catch your eye. Shane Bieber and Jose Ramirez are most definitely superstars, but they're not exactly the most marketable players in the world, leading to the Indians flying under the radar. The Indians finished the season with 80 wins, and if they got a full healthy season out of Shane Bieber, I believe they would have been a plus 500 team. And at 16, I have the San Diego Padres. This is a controversial one here as the Padres are one of the most stacked teams in baseball on paper. They were looking like a 100 win team heading into the season, but they were definitely the most disappointing team in all of baseball as they only finished with 79 wins. With the recent hire of Bob Melvin and many other players coming back from injury, there is reason to believe that this team can bounce back next season, but I can't put them any higher than 16 when the last time I saw them on the field, they were just collapsing in all aspects of the game. Coming in at 15, I have the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies are a pretty solid baseball team with starting pitchers like Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, and Ranger Suarez. And they had a leading NL MVP candidate and Bryce Harper who carried them down the stretch, but ultimately they did end up finishing with 82 wins and missing out on the postseason. Still a pretty solid team in my opinion, and I have them coming in at 15. Moving on at number 14, I have the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds are really a dangerous baseball team. This year they finished at 83 and 79 and slightly missed out on the postseason. They have a lot of talented players like Nick Castellanos, Jesse Winker, Joey Votto, Luis Castillo, Sonny Gray. A lot of good players on this team. Uh, they're a pretty solid team, so I have them coming in at 14. And at number 13, I have the Oakland A's. The Athletics are a solid team as they finished with 86 wins this season, but it really seems like it's just the same thing year in and year out. They're usually a solid team, but nothing more than that. But you still can't deny the Oakland A's are a solid team. I got them coming in at 13. Moving on to number 12, I have the Seattle Mariners. The Mariners were one of the most surprising teams in all of baseball. They were really projected to lose close to 100 games in March, but they ended up winning 90. All in all, a pretty solid baseball team, and while they might fall down a little bit back to earth next year, you can't deny that they were not a surprise this year. They were a very good baseball team. And at number 11, I have the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals finished the season at 90 and 72, and they pulled off a 17 game win streak in the end of the season in September to clinch a wild card spot. They did end up getting knocked out by the Dodgers in the wild card round, but this team is very talented offensively and on the pitching side of things. Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt, the anchors offensively, and you have Adam Wainwright and Jack Flaherty in the starting rotation. And getting started with our top 10 here at number 10, I have the New York Yankees. The Yankees are one of the better teams in baseball on paper, but they did lose to the Red Sox in the wild card game. They have loads of talent offensively with guys like Giancarlo Stanton, Aaron Judge, and many others. And they have one of the best pitchers in the game in Garrett Cole. Got a very good baseball team here. I got them coming in at number 10. Moving on to number 9, I have the Toronto Blue Jays. People might not like this one, but I have been big on the Blue Jays since the beginning of last year. This offense is lethal. They are one of the best offenses in baseball, and their pitching rotation is also loaded with pitchers like Jose Barrios, Robbie Ray, and Hunjin Ryu. Next year, this team will be back, and they will be better, and they will be competing for the AL East crown. Coming in at number 8, I have the Chicago White Sox. The White Sox finished the season at 93-69, and 69, and they really lived up to the expectations. But in the postseason, they got tossed around by the Astros. They really just looked like a shell of themselves. The White Sox are a very good baseball team, but they got to show us a little bit more in the postseason if they want to get near the top 5. At number 7, I have the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers have a three-headed monster in their starting rotation of Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, and Freddie Peralta. They do have some solid offensive bats in Willie Adamas and Abasayo Garcia. 
If this team can hit their stride offensively next year and add some reinforcements in the offseason, look out. Coming in at number 6, I have the Tampa Bay Rays. The Rays had yet another outstanding season, finishing with 100 wins, landing them the number one seed in the American League. Now, the Rays are a very good team, but they just got outplayed by the Red Sox in the ALDS, so I can't put them in the top five. Getting started with our top five, at number five, I have the Boston Red Sox. Coming into this year, the Red Sox were really not expected to do much because of their lackluster starting rotation. And while the pitching wasn't all that great, the offense is what stepped up for Boston. J.D. Martinez, Xander Bogarts, Rafael Devers all had great offensive seasons, leading the Red Sox to a 92-win season. All in all, we have a great baseball team here. Got them coming in at number 5. And at number 4, I have the San Francisco Giants. The Giants finished the season at 107-55, and by far the most surprising team in baseball. This team was projected to win around 70 games heading into the year, and they just proved everyone wrong. They had all in all one of the best rotations in baseball, and a lot of players step up offensively. Coming in at number three, I have the LA Dodgers. The Dodgers on paper are most definitely the best team in baseball. They had three legitimate Cy Young candidates in Max Scherzer, Walker Buehler, and Julio Arias. And if they get Trevor Bauer back next season, that could make for four Cy Young candidates in one rotation. And offensively, they just have talent all around in guys like Justin Turner, Corey Seager, Mookie Betts. I mean, there's just talent everywhere, top to bottom on this roster. And I have them coming in as the third best team in baseball. Coming in at number two, I have the Houston Astros. The Astros finished the regular season with 95 wins, and they really showed up this postseason. They took care of the White Sox and the Red Sox, leading them to a World Series matchup with Atlanta. And while they put up a good fight against Atlanta, they ultimately were beat in six games. But Houston is just so talented all around. They have one of the better young starting rotations in all of baseball, with a just absolutely stacked offensive lineup. They proved a lot of people wrong this year. They were not cheating, and they made it to the World Series, and they were pretty close to winning it. And coming in at number one, the best team in baseball, I have the Atlanta Braves. It just can't go anywhere else with this one. The Braves just won the World Series, topping the Houston Astros in six games. And what makes this World Series run for our Atlanta even more impressive is that they lost their best player in Ronald Acuna Jr. And when Acuna went down, many people were writing them off, but they ended up pulling it off and winning the World Series. And offensively, this team is just loaded and next year, when they get Acuna back, they might just be even better. Atlanta Braves, fresh off a World Series victory, have to come in at number one. So there you have it, my final 2021 power rankings. Let me know what you guys think down below, whether you agree or disagree, because I'm sure we're going to have many disagreements with this one. And as always, if you guys do enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe. Posting plenty of baseball videos over here, and I'm going to continue to do so going forward. And I also want to thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.